Hello everybody, my name is Josh Barron and I am a certified instructor here at Midwest Truck Driving School. Uh, I've been a certified instructor here going on a decade now and something that some recent students asked was, can you take a couple practice tests on the combination vehicle and general knowledge and the air brakes? Because they're just very difficult tests and we go through a great in-depth training here. We also have a great online air brake, comic vehicle, and general knowledge test. But I want to be able to go through this for you all so that you can see kind of what my thinking is when it comes to some of these questions. So I can't promise I'm going to do them all right, but I'm certainly going to try. Let's go and go through a practice test. You can pause the video where you like. Feel free to answer the question on your own and then see if you got it right. All that good stuff. And um, if you want to check out the great online course when it comes to combination vehicles, uh, there's a link below that will give you all that great information. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So first question here, a trailer is most likely a jackknife when it is, that's going to be empty. When there's less traction, you're simply not going to be able to um, skim over the road surface if there's more traction. So you're going to be a lot more likely to skim and slide and jackknife um, when it is empty because that's when there's less traction uh, in your CMV. You have a major leak in the service line and you apply the brakes. Service air pressure will escape and cause the, well, so the service line is the blue line going from the truck to the trailer. Uh, that line is activated with the service brake, which is of course the brake pedal, the foot pedal, the foot brake. Uh, when you hit that, air is going to leak out and it's going to continue to leak out. And then if you keep doing that, well, eventually the trailer emergency brakes are going to come on. Um, but that's going to take a minute, but that's what's going to happen. While you check if the trailer is securely coupled to the tractor, the landing gear should be... So that's kind of implying that you just connected the tractor to the trailer. And in that case, the landing gear should be slightly raised at that point. That's going to be kind of how that's designed. While you are driving a combination vehicle, if the service line comes apart but the emergency line stays together, what will happen right away? Well, if the service line comes apart, the emergency line stays together, assuming you're not hitting the brakes, and once again with these tests, you wanna choose the best answer. Not the right answer, but the best answer. Because um, the DMV can be awfully kind of tricky and, and confusing sometimes. So um, so nothing is gonna happen until you try to apply the brakes, then you, as soon as you apply the brakes, you'll recognize right away that you don't have trailer brakes, and the air will start escaping out of the service line. So kind of a goofy question, but that is the answer they're looking for. You are uncoupling a, tra a trailer after you shut off the trailer air supply and lock trailer brakes. You should, um, okay, so this is a little trick. I've done this before. Back up gently to ease pressure on the physical locking jaws because once that kingpin locks uh, with the locking jaws, it doesn't want to come undone. And so this is a little trick. Back up against the lock trailer brakes and that'll make it easier to pull that uh, fifth wheel release handle to be able to unlock the locking jaws. That makes sense. All right, in general, the higher truck center of gravity, the, the easier it is to turn over. If you have a high center of gravity, the more likely it is to roll over, absolutely. If you have a coupled with a semi-trailer, where should you put the front trailer support before driving away? Well, I'm assuming they're talking about the landing gear here, and you wanna fully raise them and uh, secure that crank handle, that's gonna make the most sense. What is the safest way to turn right from a two-way road? Um, well, you want to turn wide as you complete your turn? Yes, because that's going to be what they call a jug handle, um, a button hook turn as opposed to a jug handle turn. I'm reading the second one there. If you turn wide before you start your turn, two things can happen. One, you can actually merge into a car trying to pass you, or you could literally get into a head-on collision because you're going into oncoming traffic. Um, you really don't want a jug handle. You want a button hook, which is turning wide as we complete our turn. That's going to be the safest thing. A combination vehicle stopping distance is longest when it is. So when you're fully loaded, uh, especially air brake tractor trailers, they are, when they're loaded, they have more traction. When they have more traction, they make it easier to kind of stop or they have a shorter stopping days distance because of that. If you're empty, you're more likely to skim over the road surface and you can see those accidents skipping once in a while. So empty is going to be the answer I believe they're looking for here, which it is. While coupling your tractor to a trailer, you should you have pushed in the trailer supply valve. You should not move the tractor. The air, or whole air brake system is it's going to be a normal pressure. Once you push those valves in, you want to make sure you're 
you know, normal range is typically between 100 and 125 PSI. All right, before you start to uncouple, you must make sure the ground is solid and support the weight of the trailer. Yes. Uh, make sure the trailer has enough air supplies or brakes to hold. Well, no, because those are spring brakes right there. Um, make, sure the, make sure the ground is solid and can support the weight of the trailer. Yeah. If the ground is solid, can support the weight of the trailer, that's important. A lot of manufacturing plants and mills actually have a concrete strip that they put the loaded landing gear on. That way they know what's going to hold that trailer. Loss of air pressure in the emergency thing causes definitely the emergency brakes on the trailer to come on. Let's see if that's an answer. There it is for sure. That's the red line going from the truck to the trailer. That line has a leak in it. All the air is going to leak out and the uh, trailers, uh, emergency brakes, spring brakes are going to come on. As part of your vehicle inspection test, if your vehicle is equipped with air brakes and has a trailer, you will inspect the air connection between the truck and tractor and the trailer. Make sure that the blank are locked in place and free of damage or leaks. So that's going to be the gland hands going from the truck to the trailer. You can kind of see those right there, but that's, uh, that's a common place for air to leak from. Uh, and there's little rubber seals there that you want to check during your pre-trip to make sure they're in good working order. The best way to tell if your trailer started to skid is to um, see it in your mirrors. So you see a trailer starting to jackknife, you want to pay attention to your mirrors. See it in your mirrors is going to be the best answer. You are coupling a tractor or semi-trailer. You have backed up but are not under it. Before backing on the trailer, you should hook up. So especially if you don't have spring brakes, you want to hook up the emergency and service airlines. One that's going to stabilize the trailer, and then you're going to be able to apply the trailer's uh, emergency spring parking brakes and uh, secure that trailer before you back under it. When backing a tractor under a trailer, you should uh, always use the lowest reverse gear. That makes sense. You don't want to be in high gear. You want to take it nice and slow. To, to stop a trailer skid, you should... Um, well, if a trailer is skidding, that means your brakes are locked up. That means you want to release the brakes, allow those wheels to start moving, giving them uh, rolling resistance, and then it's going to suck right back underneath that tractor. So that's going to be the safest bet. Release those brakes. You should use chocks when parking trailer without spring brakes because, um, well, uh, the brakes will fail if the air supply leaks away. Yeah, the brakes, if the air supply leaks away, there's going to be no brakes holding the shoe to the drum. And so that can be... Um, that can be dangerous. The tractor protection valve is designed to close automatically as air sub pressure falls into the pressure range for the manufacturer typically. So the tractor protection valve is on the back of the tractor. That's going to feed the red valve on the dash. And so that's going to pop when air pressure gets 20 to 45 PSI engaging your emergency brakes, your spring brakes at that point. You are coupling a semi-trailer to your tractor but have not backed under it. The trailer is at the right height if... It'll be raised slightly when the tractor's backed under it. Uh, a truck goes, goes underneath the trailer and raises it up a little bit. That's normal, that's kind of expected. All right, just like that. Uh, v results, so we got 100%. We didn't uh, miss any this time, so uh, lucky me. Uh, but I will tell you, if you're gonna be taking this and you want some good formal training on combination vehicles, the school puts on a great combination vehicles online training. I'm gonna put the link down below so you can check it out. Um, this is something that we use for our own students here, and uh, one of the we're one of the bigger truck driving schools here uh, in the Midwest. Um, also, if you want uh, more information on air brakes, um, once again, combination vehicles, general knowledge, tanker endorsement, hazmat endorsement, the school puts on great online trainings for all these endorsements and all these tests. Um, I'll put those links down below as well. And uh, once again, feel free to check out our website, midwestcdl.com. And do me a favor, if you will, hit that thumbs up button and uh, hit that uh, subscribe button for more great videos from Midwest Truck Driving School. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, keep that shiny side up. Bye-bye now.